Hello people, I am Bharat Acharya. Welcome to a new video. So in today's video, we are going to learn about this DOS Interrupt INT21H. If you have uh, programs in college, if you do programming, if you have practical exam, you better know this interrupt because you need this interrupt for practically everything that you do in a program. Now INT21H is a multi-purpose interrupt, okay, understand what I am saying. That same instruction INT21H can do a variety of operations. There are numerous activities that it does. You don't really need to know all of them, at least as a student point of view, but you need to know a few of them. So the ones that are used regularly are to input a character. Like in a C program, when you type C in, what happens in that command C in, suppose you write C in and X, and when you execute that line, the cursor is blinking and whatever the user enters comes into that variable X. Similarly, to input a character from the user, if you want the user to enter numbers for you, like write a program to add two numbers, but the numbers should be taken in from the user. You need to use int21. Now int21 can also be used to input a whole string. Instead of just taking a single value, a whole string. Now, this is typically useful in palindrome program. Many people who do 8086 programming come across this program called palindrome in Bombay University. It's super popular. Okay, one of the most frequently asked programs. Now, palindrome program, you know what's a palindrome, right? They'll give you a string. Uh, you got to see forward, reverse, whether the string is the same or not. Sometimes, when the examiner is uh, lenient or if they, you just are a lucky day, the a string will be hard coded and given in the question. Write a program to determine whether this string is a palindrome. But generally that's not the case. Generally they want you to accept the string from the user at in the practicals, not in the theory paper. Theory paper, of course, the string is given. Practicals is a different ballgame altogether. So you want the user to enter the whole string and you want to capture, store the string and then work on it. So whether you want to input a single character or you want to input a string, both cases you use INT21. Similarly, to display a character and to display a string. Again, you added two numbers, now you want to display the result. The result is a value that you want to send out on the screen. So for that, you use int21. That, that is a single value. That For that, we use the function display a character. Suppose you want to display a string. The question is, write a program to invert a string or arrange a string in ascending order or something of that sort. So they'll give you a random order string. You arrange it in ascending order. Now you want to display the whole string. To display a single character or to display a string, both cases, again, you use INT21. Lastly, the, and there are many more uses. These are typically used by engineering students. That's why I'm covering them. So to terminate the program, the termination code of a program, you would have seen this. Every program ends with this particular code. So for that also use INT21. So you come out of that DOS system, come back into the system that you are in anyway. So my point is, there are so many functions of INT21. Which function do you want to use? How do you decide that? You're writing int21 in every case. Yep. The value that you put in ah before invoking int21, can you see? I have left that blank. Can you see? Something else will come in each case. So depending upon the value that you put in ah, that acts as a parameter. If you know what's the meaning of passing parameters to functions, so that acts as a parameter. So depending upon the value that you put in ah and invoke int21, int21 will show you the appropriate behavior. Is that clear? So that's what I'm going to teach you in this video, how to do all of this, not just the correct values. Values are nothing. You just do a Google search, you'll get the values. But how do these work? and what happens, how, what is the relation of all of this with ASCII values. Uh, you know this, when a user enters 5, you don't get 5, you get 35, the ASCII code. So how do you, what do you do with it, etc, etc, is what I'm going to teach you in the video. Now, this was the introduction, the whole video is there on my website. Come to my website, www.bharatacharyaeducation.com. You can also download our app, now the app is in the market, there are more than 500 downloads of the app already and it's just increasing, there's been 3 days that the app has been rolled out. And uh, Within the app, you have the advantage of downloading the video. Yes, it takes time to download a video, but then you do it only once. So you don't have to sit and stare at it while it's been downloading. In your college where you have free Wi-Fi, just select the video to download. Keep it for only. And by the time your lecture is over, a set of your videos are downloaded. Now you can watch them again and again at home without using internet data. So you don't need to spend data of gigabytes to watch the videos again and again. So you, that's one advantage. I'm also giving the notes, the, uh, the, the, the respective topic of from the notes in, along with the video in the app. So you not only have the understanding of the topic through the video, you also have the answer, the actual answer that has to be written. So, and we are going on adding more and more features. There are lots of things in my uh, bag of kitties which I want to add, but each of it takes a long time to implement. So trying to put all of them together and not even starting with it is not what I wanted to do. So slowly by slowly as, as possible, we keep adding more and more features. Yes, they also increase the cost. So I didn't want to raise the cost very high. So you're just adding the features one by one, one by one as in when 
when we can. Okay, come on the website, enjoy learning the subject. See ya.